I threw together a collection of some of the objects that you'll be using in your still life setup. So you should see some of those. They're going to be familiar to you. Anyway, we're looking at composition here and you're using a viewfinder. And a viewfinder is a cool tool that you can use. It has the rule of thirds grid on it. And just so you know, I have a couple of these on me every time I go to paint. And we're, we're doing drawing here, but drawing is the foundation to a good painting. And when I start a painting, I always start with kind of a basic outline. So anyway, we're looking through it. I'm showing you my view, what I'm, what I'm seeing, and I'm trying to align up some things. I'm looking to line up the horizon, horizon line with one of those bottom third uh, horizontal lines. You could do the top third one as well. And then I want to consider where the intersecting lines are and where my focal point is. So you want to figure that out. So I've already chosen a focal point. I want that teacup to be it. So I want to make sure that because the, the teacup is the focal, that I, I put the teacup over one of those intersections where those lines cross. And you can see that that's what I'm doing right here. I'm also thinking about lining up the teapot with one of the vertical lines. This is just one composition that could work. I could find others within the same arrangement of objects. Here I've played around and rearranged some things so you could see another type of setup using the viewfinder and you can see I'm holding the viewfinder in front of my eye. I should tell you that when I'm doing this, I close one eye. If you have both eyes open, it's hard to tell uh, the alignment. So when I am looking through there, I close one eye and that's how I draw it. That's how I am able to transfer it onto a sheet of paper, onto my thumbnail sketch. But you have to hold it steady and you have to remember where you aligned up the points and lines and you have to keep it consistent. So here's another setup too. You can do a vertical. In fact, I want you to try one vertical composition. It is okay to zoom into an area. That's perfectly fine as long as you have a different composition for each one. In fact, you can do multiple compositions using the same objects as long as you find a different arrangement. I wanted to show you how I am drawing this using the viewfinder. So I hold the viewfinder with my hand that I don't draw with and I try and keep it as steady as I can and I usually pick a point where I know I want to align up. Usually it's a focal point. So if that teacup's the focal point and I have it on one of the intersections, I make sure I make a note of which intersection it's on and I continue to realign it because my hand kind of wiggles or I breathe or I move to make a mark on my paper. So I just want to make sure I remember which point it's on. And then I make tick marks. So once you start making tick marks, it's actually easy. You want to look at where the object starts within the grid how far up it is, how long it is, and that's how you can um, start with one object and then work your way out to some of the other objects there too. And again, use the grid to help figure out the placement of things. That's how I use it. And you can see I'm doing those little tick marks, height, width, and then later I'll go back without using the viewfinder to flush it out. And I'll look for things like overlap and I'll compare the size of one object to another. Like looking at that gold pumpkin, how much bigger it, is that gold pumpkin than the orange one? Is it the same size as the teapot? I'll ask myself those questions. Lastly, there is one other thing you can do. And this is, I would say, if you're struggling with using the viewfinder, you can take a Expo marker, this type of uh, whiteboard marker actually, and you can hold it in place and trace over it. Now this was really hard to capture on camera in front of the lens, so mine looks like it's off, but I, I, from my point of view, I could actually see it. But I'm tracing the horizon line and then I'm tracing the hydrangea flower and I'm tracing, it looks kind of like a trip right now, but I'll show you what it looks like at the end. And it's not gonna be a glamorous drawing, but it's going to be a map for me to use uh, for when I actually draw it on the thumbnail sketch itself. So here's what my viewfinder, expo marker, whiteboard marker uh, looks like 
after I've traced it. Um, and it's not that great, but I can tell like, okay, there's the gold cup in front. There's the hydrangea flower. There's the leaf. There's the rolling pin and there's the uh, can or like the kitchen utensil can. And then you can just wipe it out when you're done and go back to just the regular viewfinder. So we're going to start on a white sheet of drawing paper and we're going to use a pencil. So you're going to make some rectangles here and you kind of have to go all the way up to the top of the paper to make sure they fit. These rectangles are going to measure four by six inches. We're doing three of them. Two are going to be horizontal and the last one is going to be a vertical. So these are called thumbnail sketches, these frames, and they're going to be really important for you. In fact, I do them for almost every drawing or painting I do if it's an important one and this one is. Okay, so now I'm going to divide each rectangle into thirds. Now it's going to be easy on the six inch side because we can just divide it into two inch, three two inch sections and then you can connect it up vertically. For the short side, you're going to have to eyeball it and make sure you get as close to being accurate as you can before lining it up. So it does look like a tic-tac-toe grid, that's what you want. And it should match that viewfinder that you're looking through. Your paper should look like this, where you have three frames and you have it divided up into thirds. Doing the thumbnail sketch, it's important that you're looking through the viewfinder, but it's also important to have the cast shadow and the background shaded in. Now these sketches are loose. They're not supposed to be perfect sketches. They're just to help you figure out where things go and to kind of head off any potential mistakes that you could have. So you do want to make sure that your focal point, again, is in one of those intersections and you do want to go ahead and get those uh, cast shadows so you can tell what direction the light's coming from and identify the background so you have a foreground and a background plane. Here's my three different sketches where I have identified a different focal in each one. And I'm just playing around with different types of compositions. And you can see I've shaded in the background and the cast shadows on there. In fact, I'm actually going to take a marker and highlight where my focal point is. And you can see there's the intersection on all three. There's actually two uh, important points on that second drawing there. At this stage, I want you to call me over so I can check them with you and we'll discuss which one is your strongest and if anything needs to be changed.